On this week's episode of Inside Iowa, see how the University of Iowa is committed to environmental sustainability. Join astrophysicist Neil deGrasse Tyson as he stops by campus to visit with students. Go golfing with some Hawkeyes for a good cause. Take a behind the scenes look with the dance department's faculty graduate concert. Meet some Iowa alumni and staffers who are also on the local roller derby team. And see how the Children's Hospital worked wonders for a baby born with a narrow trachea. Welcome back to another episode of Inside Iowa, where we'll share the stories from the university, its students, faculty, and alumni, and show you how they're all making a difference. I'm Lauren Moss. And I'm Eric Dawn. Each week, we'll profile the people and places on campus that make the University of Iowa a leader in academics and research. One way the university strives to make an impact is by being green. The College of Public Health was recently awarded LEED Platinum Certification. LEAD, or Leadership in Energy and Environmental Design, is a voluntary program demonstrating leadership in environmental and green initiatives, and Platinum is the highest designation possible. LEAD was developed by the U.S. Green Building Council and is a nationally recognized benchmark for design, construction, and operation of eco-friendly and sustainable buildings. The College of Public Health was the first academic building on campus to achieve the Platinum certification. Let's see what makes the building a leader in green design. As with any project or new building that we do on campus, we require LEED certification to the silver level. Uh, that's Leadership in Energy and Environmental Design. It's a, a measuring stick for sustainability, for design in, in green ways recognized around the world, and throughout the nation. And all of our buildings since we instituted that program have been reaching the LEED silver as a minimum. In fact, our energy efficiency standards for our campus take the default for LEED certification usually into the gold category. But we had yet to achieve LEED Platinum, which is the highest level of LEED certification for any academic building on campus. The College of Public Health becomes the second building on our campus that has reached LEED Platinum. Our data center on the Oakdale campus was the first, but it is more difficult to get a standard office classroom building to reach that highest level of LEED certification. It has meaning on several levels. First, it showcases the university's commitment to sustainability and, and good stewardship of energy and the environment. Second, the kinds of commitments that you make in constructing a building that gets LEED certification are absolutely at the core of our values and mission as a College of Public Health. In LEED, it's a point-based system, so as you choose to do things within the design, both on the site and the building, the building systems that are energy efficient or good for the occupants in the building, you receive points that take you up the ladder from LEED certification to LEED certification silver to gold to platinum. We do not do it for symbolic reasons. We didn't reach LEED Platinum on the College of Public Health building because we aimed for getting LEED Platinum for that sake. We look at it as a return on investment. It's a cost of ownership, a total cost of ownership for the buildings that we occupy that last the lifetime of these buildings that we expect to be on this campus for 50 to 100 years. And so every year, year over year, these energy efficient methods we use in design pay off. And we look at each of those methods when we're designing the building. So we don't look at it as just spending money, but rather investing in doing the wise thing and socially responsible thing in making sustainability a, a priority for us at the University of Iowa. A lot of LEED is infrastructure. So it's invisible. The way that you set up you know, the plumbing, the waste removal, the construction of the building, the recycling of the materials, the extra materials from construction. So these are things that happen that you don't necessarily see. And the part that's exciting for me is that that's very much like public health. Public health is a lot of infrastructure. When it works, it's invisible. College of Public Health diverted 97% of the construction waste away from the landfill. That's an extremely high percentage, and through the LEED program, we are rewarded for that effort as well. Within the building itself, you're not necessarily getting points for the structure, but you do get points 
for the materials that are constructed as a part of this project, keeping them local, using recycled goods, using recycled woods and certified woods that the LEED program recognize as renewable. You're going to put up four walls and a roof no matter what. And if you can put up four walls and a roof and do it in a way that contributes to the well-being of the environment, that's really important. And that's what LEED is about. It's, it's not just a badge that you wear, it's a commitment that you make that's enduring across the life of the building. LEED also looks at what is good for the people who come into that building. So natural daylight, views of the outside are very important. And this building maximizes those opportunities and in addition offers, if, if one visits the building, some very dramatic views of the campus, aiming the building and its atriums back toward the Pentecrest and the old Capitol Dome. My favorite part about the building is the light and the central staircase. So this is a building that you come into and it invites you to walk. The site itself is part of a campus pathway that connects the east side of our campus across the Iowa River to the west side of the campus and the medical campus. This building becomes an interesting and important link and in fact very fitting for the College of Public Health which is the college that probably most readily connects the med campus to our undergraduate programs and this building, this site serves as a physical link and also a symbolic link for that. Coming up next, take a tour of campus with celebrated astrophysicist Neil deGrasse Tyson and join some Hawkeye athletes as they hit the links this summer to help out Special Olympics Iowa. And go behind the scenes of a faculty graduate dance performance. All of that and more when Inside Iowa returns. Tradition, mm -hmm. ambition, exploration, inspiration. You feel it when you step on campus at the University of Iowa. The energy and pride of students inspired by our history and excited about our future. When you join the Hawkeye family, you're a part of it all. Be a part of it. Be a part of it. Be a part of it. Be a Hawkeye. For more than 100 years, the University of Iowa community has been waking up to the Daily Iowan. Today, it's the largest newsroom in eastern Iowa, and now you can see the news every night on Daily Iowan TV. DITV, your news, sports, and weather source for the University of Iowa and is produced by University of Iowa students and presented by the Hawkeye Network. Wonder, curiosity, solutions. That's what famed astrophysicist and the smartest celebrity ever, Neil deGrasse Tyson, brought to University of Iowa students. Tyson came to campus as part of the University Lecture Committee, and students, faculty, and alumni waited hours to hear his lecture. He also stopped by KRUI Studios and shared some of his wisdom. NASA is one of the greatest drivers of innovation that has ever come across a culture. Space is a kind of frontier where there are solutions we already know exist and solutions yet undreamt of. Neil deGrasse Tyson, the acclaimed astrophysicist, the director of the Hayden Planetarium, founder of the Astrophysics Department of the Museum of Natural History, is also a hugely popular figure with University of Iowa students and visited the University of Iowa campus to share his experience, wisdom, and inspiration. Uh, what happens when the asteroid comes? Is your first thought, run? Or is it, well, how can I deflect that asteroid? 
the day you stop wondering is the day, you know, what are you at that point? You, uh, you're not fully embracing all of what it is to be alive and human because humans wonder and we have the intellectual capacity to do something about it. Uh, plus the opposable thumbs, as the anthropologist will tell you. <laughs> Tyson not only made students laugh, but he makes students wonder and encourages all to seek solutions. If I stand in front of some eighth graders and say, who wants to design the first airfoil to navigate the rarefied atmosphere of Mars, I'm getting the best students there are, the very best. And that their vision is, let me dream up stuff that's never been dreamt before. And out of those kinds of mission statements come extraordinary solutions to cultural problems that have never been even imagined. Cultural problems, Dr. Tyson explained in his lecture, his many books, and even in his many tweets. But Dr. Tyson left the members of the University of Iowa community looking to the stars. And when you embrace curiosity, all the answers to questions just come for free because your curiosity finds them. And it's a curiosity that most adults have lost. So I'm just trying to reignite that level of curiosity about the natural world in the adult population. Over the summer, 24 Hawkeyes participated in the 12th annual Swing with the Celebrities Golf Tournament, a benefit to help Special Olympics Iowa. That's right, Eric, and you know Hawkeyes have hearts of gold, which is why athletes and coaches are always willing to lend a hand. They joined Steve Stodola, a Special Olympics athlete who has been to all 12 golf tournaments and isn't a bad putter. <laughs> Steve Stodola is a Special Olympics athlete. This summer, he attended the 12th annual Special Olympics fundraiser, Swing with the Celebrities. In fact, he's played golf for 20 years and always attends the event. Special Olympics Iowa is a statewide nonprofit organization that provides high quality training and competition for children and adults with intellectual disabilities. Steve is active in Special Olympics and plays golf, softball, basketball, and tennis. Tell me what you got, Steve. What'd you get in the tennis? Go Meryl. Swing with the Celebrities is a golf tournament sponsored by the L.L. Pelling Company and held at Brown Deer Golf Course in Coralville. Following a day of golf, there was a silent auction to raise additional money. Several University of Iowa alum donated their time for the fundraiser, including Brian Ferentz, the offensive lineman coach and former Iowa football player, who also brought Iowa fan gear for the auction. It's always good to, to be a part of something that, that does something very nice for other people, and if you get to have fun while you're doing it, that's an added bonus. While former Hawkeye athletes are the celebrities of this event, the Special Olympians are definitely celebrities too. Generally we have a Special Olympics athlete come out and speak during the event, and then we also have Steve Stodola who's been with us every year since we've had the golf tournament. And he actually, on I think it's hole 17 this year, he actually putts once the groups get up to him then he puts for them. The event serves as a fundraiser for the Midwinter Tournament for Special Olympics, held by the University of Iowa in March. It's for over 900 to 1,000 athletes that compete in basketball, basketball skills, cheerleading, gymnastics, and powerlifting. And we are the only event in Iowa of the three major events that once the athletes reach Iowa City, they have no expenses. So we take great pride in that fundraising. The University of Iowa has a top tier dance program, and we went behind the scenes with the Department of Dance 2013 faculty graduate performance. Dancer Jack Cumming and choreographer Eloy Berrigan share their insight into their piece, Wake Believe, and talk about what makes this performance so special to them. This time, there are parts when everyone's eyes are going to be on me. So, you know, you're nerv I'm nervous that I don't want to make a mistake, but I'm also extremely excited because, I mean, dancing in front of all of North Hall and, uh, you know, Space Place is just going to be, you know, it's fun. The audience gets into it, and when you get into it, you know, I can really feel the energy, and it's going to be really cool. All right. Uh, my name is Jack Cumming, and I'm uh, currently a first year senior here at the University of Iowa Dance Department and I'm performing in Wake Believe, I think is the name of the piece. Cut that part, because... <laughs> My 
my name is Eloy Barragan. I'm an associate professor at the University of Iowa and one of the choreographers for Faculty Grad Concept. Faculty Grad is, is, is a great show because his own weight, but unfortunately, unfortunately we don't have enough time to prepare. So I start to develop the idea last semester. Last semester and start to build material. Since then and then we have, since the beginning of the semester until now, which is about like four, three weeks. Yeah, it's been a really long process. Of course, the break in between kind of gets some people off edge, but uh, you know, everything has been online for us to view and we've been even groups of us we rehearse over break together just to keep the partnering and lifts you know clean so it's been it's been long but it's been fun and the piece the piece is it beset uh, the, from the opera Carmen uh, everybody knows that opera well, I hope that everybody knows beautiful music and great story but I didn't want to take the same story I wanted to see uh, have uh, 17 ladies and one guy and uh, we we are taking I was thinking about like what it will happen if I knew the future uh, well um, you know right now there's still a few things to brush up on before you know the opening night on Thursday but uh, I'm really excited for the performance and uh, I really love everyone that we've worked with. I've met a lot of cool people. Um, I mean there's I think 18 or 19 of us in the cast. We've all become really good friends and you know, it's just been a blessing to work with everyone. I think that when we're done with this piece um, it's going to be a little bit sad because of the amount of hours we put in it and you know to be finally done. It, I mean I, I'm not looking forward to it because it's just been such a fun and exciting process and I've learned so much. Coming up after the break, lace up some skates and see why some alum like to get their derby on. And learn how the children's hospital used cartilage from a newborn's rib to open his airway. Show your Iowa pride, the Iowa Hawk Shop, where Iowa shops. The ultimate collection of Iowa Hawkeye merchandise, gifts, and apparel. Help support the University of Iowa. All proceeds benefit men's and women's athletic teams and student programs. The Iowa Hawk Shop where Iowa shops. Show your Iowa pride. Call 1-800-HAWK-SHOP or visit www.hawkshop.com. Kick back and relax as Java Blend takes you from your home right into the Java House in downtown Iowa City. Experience local and national talent perform for a live audience featuring musical groups from all over the country. Java Blend puts you in the front row of each performance. Java Blend is presented by Iowa Public Radio and the Hawkeye Network. Welcome back. Roller Derby is increasing in popularity, and several Iowa alumni and staff members are hitting the rink. The old Capital City Roller Girls are celebrating its fourth season of Rumble and Tumble on Skates and has grown over the years from five skaters to over 50. It's an athletically demanding sport, but it also provides an outlet for these girls to take their mind off the daily grind. Be sure to try to catch a game next time they roll through town. My name is Sierra 
and I am a nursing assistant at the University at the hospital. I work in the digestive disease procedure clinics. Associate Director with the College of Arts and Sciences Academic Programs and Student Development Office. So I work with all of the undergraduates in the College of Arts and Sciences. I work as a child and family therapist in the Iowa City School District. Um, I do play in art therapy with kids. I had never been a big sports participator in high school, so I don't know, I heard about this and I went and watched about, and I was just like, I can do that, you know, and I mean, I was, I was looking for a new outlet, you know, a new group of friends, and just to meet people. My draw to roller derby, uh, you know, I, 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 I spend all week long listening to other people's problems day, and this is kind of a really nice release. Um, it's a great way to work out. keep my personal and professional life pretty separate and distinct. Um, my coworkers do know, they come and support me, and they make jokes about it, but they know it really doesn't affect my professional setting necessarily, but they know it's just a part of who I am. There's two main positions uh, in roller derby, jammers and blockers. Jamming is the point scorers on the team. They're the women who try to get through the pack to score points. Um, blockers are the people in the pack who try to stop the jammers from scoring points. Um, every opposing blocker that the jammer passes is one point in the game of roller derby. It's the very bare bones basic. We don't discriminate based on age, size, shape, style, music preference, dress preference. Everybody kind of fits into roller derby. Uh, it's becoming a lot more athletic, so you'll see a lot of us are just in, you know, athletic tights and our jerseys most of the time. If you've never seen a roller derby bout, come out and watch. It's a great experience. It's a spectator event. We need our we need our fans to come in, cheer us on, help us beat the other teams, and really give us a chance. When baby Keen was a week old, his parents noticed his mouth and lips were turning blue. Doctors sent him to the University of Iowa Children's Hospital. At eight days old, he had surgery for laryngomalacia, which causes the soft cartilage of the larynx to collapse inward when breathing. Doctors also discovered he had a narrow trachea, which was also contributing to his difficulty breathing. So they performed another surgery, using cartilage from his rib to widen his airway. Today, Kean can breathe just fine. He enjoys spending time outdoors and playing games with his friends and family, all thanks to the experts on hand at the University of Iowa Children's Hospital. Kian was born normally, August 18th. We had no issues in the hospital. When he was born, we went home. I noticed episodes where he seemed to turn bluish gray around the mouth. So when we went for our one week checkup, um, we mentioned it to our doctor in Ottumwa and they said they'd observe him overnight and noticed his oxygen levels were dropping. So they sent us up here the next day to um, Dr. Bauman in the Odo Clinic. and. She sent a camera down and that's when she discovered that he had, at that time, we just thought it was laryngomalacia. And so she set him up for surgery the next day. So he was eight days old when we were first in the OR. Well, he had a condition called laryngomalacia where uh, his uh, airway flaps in and out when he's breathing to make a strider sound. And uh, he needed to have some of that tissue removed with a laser uh, to make it easier for him to breathe but he also had a condition called subglottic stenosis. So part of his trachea was narrowed down to uh, less than half of what it's, the size that it should have been. He needed to have a fairly complicated operation where um, a piece of his cartilage from his rib was harvested and uh, placed uh, into his trachea to widen it. Well, we got home and we noticed um, he was going pretty lifeless during some episodes. The graph came loose and it, it, it came loose at the top and when he would take a breath in it would lodge in his throat and it was shutting off his airway. But as soon as it would come back, I mean, he had normal breathing again. So I took him to our local ER and they said, you know, this is, in, this is out of our hands. So we brought him up here and in between he looked just happy and healthy. I mean, he was playing and laughing and we got to the ER down here and 
They said, why is he here? And I said, well, when he has these episodes, it's different. And then he had one there. He flatlined. His heart stopped for 45 seconds. And I mean, the room was just filled with everybody. And they just took him away. And that was hard. Surreal. I somehow ended up in the room by myself. And that's when the nurse that was his nurse for the day came in. And she just put her arm around me and we cried together. You knew she was human too. She wasn't just doing the job because of a paycheck. He now has a normal sized airway and no scar tissue buildup, no issues with breathing at all. It's great. <laughs> He's a very typical little boy. He loves going to school. He loves to play outside. Anything you want to do outside, he's game for that. And he loves to play Candyland. He likes to play card games. He likes to chase his mom and his teachers around with plastic pet snakes. Key in his armory. <laughs> <laughs> the UI Children's Hospital has top-notch doctors and nurses that care. Even though it's a large hospital, it's definitely one that you'll never regret coming to. To the doctors and nurses at UI Hospitals, we'd like to say thank you for saving our son's life. Well, that wraps up this week's episode. I hope you learned more about the University of Iowa, its students, faculty, research, and staff. I certainly learned a lot this week, Lauren. Be sure to tune in next week to see more stories from the university and how it makes a difference. For Inside Iowa, I'm Eric Dawn. And I'm Lauren Moss. See, see you, you next, next week. week.